What could possibly be more innocent than a group of seniors gathering together once a week to play a game of bridge? Could life savings and personal fortunes be lost in a single game of bridge? Well, the answer is yes. According to some bridge players in Austin, Texas, one of these bridge players who worked his way into a group of mostly seniors and forged friendships was not your typical bridge player. Rather, he was a person who many describe now as a California con man. His name is Greg Lahr. Many accuse Lahr of gaining everyone's trust and turning a simple game of bridge into the Bridge Club Ponzi. My name is Alexandra Cratt. My name is Steve Aubrey. My name is Fantasia London. My name is Brian Vodinka. These are just a handful of the dozens of victims, as well as others who were Greg Lars' fellow bridge players, coming forward to tell their stories of being taken for millions of dollars in a scheme using a revolving door of worthless, fraudulent mortgages. I have paid a big price, and I really feel that I am a victim as well as other people are a victim. Many other people are a victim in multiple states. And they're just like in the Madoff thing. You know, there are people who are really savvy got ripped off. According to several of the victims, Greg Lahr came to Texas around 2000 from Long Beach, California, along with his independent appraiser, Christopher Griesbach, who also uses the alias Christopher Lahr. They joined forces with a convicted drug felon from Miami, Florida named Thomas Kaufman, along with his wife, Lisa Kaufman. The other thing that was absolutely fraudulent that I had no idea about until I had a, a long interview with a guy from an FBI agent was that Thomas Kaufman was not Thomas Kaufman. He's Todd Kaufman is his legal name. He was operating under a fake name and a fake uh, social security number. Fantasia London says $100,000 was stolen from her in these fraudulent mortgages signed by Kaufman and Lahr. Using the name Capital Advantage, they allegedly created, marketed, promoted, and sold what they referred to as private trust deeds to unsuspecting victims like Fantasia London across the country. Their predatory motive was to collect exorbitant lending fees. The victims say the Kaufmans and Lahr made claims of extensive due diligence to protect the investor. These mortgages were supposedly secured by properties that the victims were told were worth much more than the loan amounts. And the appraisal was highly inflated. I don't, you know, they had appraisers who, who they worked with who just highly inflated appraisals because the money was they were supposed to be, I can't remember, like, you know, 60% of value or something. That was totally not the case. There are people out there, fraudsters, that are, that are looking to make a, a quick buck. Kurt Novi is president of Corporate Mortgage Advisors out of San Diego. His firm specializes in fraud analysis and investigation. From my experience, the private notes that I've reviewed in transactions and cases that I've worked on, there is a high degree of fraud involved in these transactions. And, it, uh, and that ranges from application fraud, stating false information on an application, to using an overinflated appraisal that, that was selected by the, by the mortgage broker, and uh, steep appreciation in value in the property without any explanation. Victims also point to documents that show the property pledged to secure the loan was not even owned by the borrower. As some of these investors began to discover they were swindled, multiple lawsuits followed. Todd Kaufman fled Texas to this home in a golf course community in Hilton Head, South Carolina. The Texas operations of Capital Advantage ceased operations around 2002. However, Greg Lahr allegedly continues to swindle retirees in California using the name Capital Advantage. The fraud victims say Lahr and Lisa Kaufman created two new shell companies to continue their Texas mortgage lending operation despite not having licenses from the Texas Securities Board, the SEC, or the Texas Department of Savings and Mortgage Lending. One of the defrauded investors who claimed Lahr and Kaufman sold her worthless loans was Sandra Gunn. 
Shockingly, at the same time Sandra Gunn was suing Lahr and Kaufman's capital advantage for selling her worthless mortgages, victims say she joined the forces of evil, arranging for Lahr and Kaufman to continue the sale of worthless mortgages under the newly minted name Creative Financial Solutions. There's their little marketing material. We offer clients fully collateral secured first and second mortgage loans that do not exceed 65% of the appraised value. Hmm. When the alleged fraudsters started operating under the new name, that's when this victim, who wished not to be identified, was lured into the scheme. Right, I had $50,000 into two properties with this company, Creative Financial Solutions. And it was Lisa Kaufman who was the person I worked with all the time just straight out con artist. He was among the investors whose loans were secured by this building in Temple, Texas. He was told it was a retail property being refurbished, when in reality it was a vacant and uninhabitable apartment building. It wasn't long before the owner and borrower of this building started writing hot checks for payments. She sent me another check, boom. Next month, hot check. Like, okay, what's going on here, Lisa? Oh, well, well, blah, 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 cash flow. The, so he had trouble with some of his tenants. So what they were doing was sending back part of your money to you, right? And my money was nothing more, you won't call it Ponzi. This was obviously a Ponzi. Here's where they paid us back with our own money. They all lied, every one of them. Lisa, Greg, Laura. As a typical Ponzi scheme, the the investors are paid off uh, as, as people need their money. New investors coming in are supplying those funds and the majority of the money is, is sifted off to the, uh, to the fraudsters who are setting up the, uh, the schemes, the Ponzi schemes. The rest went to the first and second lien holders, which if that's not a Ponzi scheme, I don't know what is, right? Taking money that I gave them and paying off the first and second lien holders. Ponzi schemes, we are seeing more and more of them. It uh, generally has not been involved in these private loans in the past to a great degree, but again, we're seeing more and more of them, and consumers need to be very careful and diligent. Yeah, I think Thomas was doing, um, and Greg too, Greg Law as well. Um, I think they were doing a kind of Ponzi scheme. Victims say Lars CPA, Mark Shifkins, formed yet another shell company, Creative Lending Concepts, to front mortgages for Lar and Kaufman. The new business enterprises, Creative Financial Solutions and Creative Lending Concepts, allegedly specialize in partnering with known criminals to divert investors' retirement savings for nefarious purposes. This type of Ponzi scheme is detailed on the Securities and Exchange Commission website. The SEC based this warning to the public on another land investment scheme originating from Orlando, Florida called Legend Sports that involved Russian mobsters in New York. Victims of the scheme in Texas say Greg Lahr also partnered with this man, prominent Austin real estate developer Peter Barlin, who has owned multiple office buildings, apartment complexes, shopping centers including Penfield Design Center, and other ventures such as the Zen restaurant chain and Rudamaya Coffee House. Lar lived in Barlin's garage apartment near downtown Austin. A recent example of Barlin, Lar, and Kaufman's alleged scheme involves this land in Maynard, Texas, just east of Austin, right next to the intersection of the new toll road and Highway 290. It is here where Barlin introduced Lar to a Russian national, Vitaly Zaretsky, who victims of the scheme say worked in secret with another Russian national, Victor Wolf. Wolf was already wanted by the FBI in Florida for a $100 million real estate fraud scheme, which the St. Petersburg Times called the $100 million vanishing act. Barlin, Lahr, and Lisa Kaufman arranged for a group of investors to loan money to Vitaly Zaretsky. The loan was secured with this property next to the two major highways. Two of the investors lured into the deal were Brian Vodica and Steve Aubrey. They were promised a very secure, 
over collateralized mortgage investments. I was even told that it was almost like a win-win situation if a borrower did default because I'd have a property worth twice what, what, my, what my investment was in it. They convinced us that this land was going to be developed with houses. Now we know their intent was just take as much money as they could and run. This is the development plan that we were shown. One of the big improvements that was going to happen to this property was an extension of a major thoroughfare called Breaker Lane. And right here, it says Breaker Lane approved. It turned out to be totally bogus. None of this has been approved by the city. Victims say they later learned that Zaretsky was actually a straw buyer or front man for Wolf and a group of Russians from Brighton Beach, New York a well-known haven for Russian organized crime. After swindling as much as they could with this land through Barlin, Lahr, and Kaufman, the Russians disappeared with the money and then dumped their shell companies in federal bankruptcy court. To make matters worse, the Russians denied the authenticity of their signatures provided to a local Austin National Bank on their personal guarantee agreements. It is believed Barlin, Lahr, Kaufman, and Gunn made approximately $500,000 in fees for arranging this Russian deal. I have over $500,000 in attorney bills, and we were fraudulent taking uh, monies that were close to $500,000. Retired radiation oncologist Alexandra Krott of Orlando, Florida, was also brought into the deal for the same Maynard, Texas land by Zaretsky and Victor Wolf. My partner was originally given a contract with the forged signature of the seller on it and identifying a piece of property that they didn't even own. What Zaretsky did while he was collecting money and selling by selling pieces of property, he would be taking the money out and then he went bankrupt. So he prevented anybody from collecting from him or any of his entities. Even U.S. federal bankruptcy judge Craig Gargata could not find the millions of dollars invested by individuals in the national banks. Victims say Barlin made tens of thousands of dollars in secret kickbacks, while investors lost everything. Investors say Barlin then had the audacity to warn them I would not go after Zaretsky. I think he is a member of the Russian mob. Time and time again, Lar allegedly arranged special financing on a multitude of properties where money was allegedly diverted. The properties where unsuspecting investors were duped include dead shopping malls throughout Texas and beyond, like Six Flags Mall in Arlington, Nolan River Mall in Cleburne, Texas, Palestine Mall in Palestine, Texas, Sunrise Mall in Corpus Christi, Northgate Mall in Lafayette, Louisiana, and Southwest Center Mall in Dallas. What you are looking at are the results of a real estate Ponzi scheme. These dead malls represent the lost investments of many Texans and others around the country. Here is where years of honest hard work and people's life savings have disappeared. Another Barlin and Lar borrower on many of these deals is Thomas E. Morris, who was indicted about 20 years ago for real estate swindling in Dallas. On the Maynard, Texas land near the major highways, Aubrey and Vodica were shown a $49 million appraisal on land that in fact is worth a fraction of that, making the entire mortgage worthless from the outset. This is where the bulk of our life savings in 30 years of effort and, and our home is, 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 was put into this, but is gone now. We don't own this. It's been taken from us. Victims say at least one of the lawyers hired to implement these fraudulent real estate transactions for Lauren Barlin was Alan Craig, who was indicted and convicted in another mortgage fraud operation. Craig closed deals and allegedly paid secret kickbacks to Barlin even after he was indicted but prior to his conviction. Craig maintained an office just down the hall from Barlin's office in one of the office buildings owned by Barlin. Craig allegedly paid Barlin secret kickbacks shortly before serving time in prison. 
Lahr and Barlin found a new lawyer, Mitchell Savrick, to allegedly create and sign off on the paperwork to manage the Ponzi scheme after Alan Craig went to prison. Victims say Savrick enjoyed a front row seat as he would witness and create paperwork to pay off old investors on unrelated deals with the monies of new investors. Savrick is accused of going as far as backdating new documents to cover his tracks after the investor's money was stolen. Victims continue to be frustrated with the accountability of law enforcement. To date, neither the FBI nor the SEC have done anything to stop the crime involving at least 500 victims and more than $100 million lost. The FBI has had multiple reports and has many opportunities to stop this crime. The alleged fraudsters just continue to prey on more victims. I see that on a regular basis where, where people are investing with, with one person or one company and then it, it rolls into a different name. It's a disguised name and they just duplicate a scheme that, uh, that works well. They just uh, recreate it under a different name in a different city and it just goes on and on. I want Thomas stopped. I don't want any, I mean that's why I went to the FBI with those years ago. And, you know, and filed a complaint that he shouldn't do this to other people and neither should Craig actually. So this begs the question why a, a, a scheme that is totaling over 500 victims, over $100 million is not getting the attention of the FBI. It does happen quite frequently, frequently that, uh, that, that people are, their voices are not heard when they're, when they're taking losses and they're losing large amounts of money. It's, uh, it, it's, it's damaging to them, obviously, they're, they're losing their investment, they're losing their income stream, and they are, are not typically heard by, by local prosecutors. For, for 10 years, people have been coming forward, have had the courage to come forward and file complaints and to bring this to the attention of law enforcement and yet nothing has been done and this continues to go on. My own money being gone is was probably the hardest but for them to be sitting there continuing to do it and to scam people, that's a slap in the face. Just a absolute slap in the face. Right? Government does nothing to stop it. How could a simple game of bridge turn into an elaborate real estate Ponzi scheme? No law enforcement or regulatory authority has taken action to close this down. Well-known Ponzi schemes run by Bernard Madoff and allegedly by Alan Stanford, who is awaiting trial, continued for years until law enforcement shut them down. Here, despite numerous victims having made repeated complaints to state and federal authorities, no action has been taken, and victims are asking why.